When I was learning Latin at school, we had a book called Kennedy's Revised Latin Primer. It was full of hundreds of tables of verbs and nouns and adjectives, all the grind of learning a language. Mine was a very tatty, green-covered book. For us, trying to discern the gospel message, these stories are a bit like Kennedy's Primer for Latin, but without the grind. They're small, perfectly formed capsules that convey the most essential elements of God's nature and relationship with us. Little miniatures of the gospel, if you like. They take us right down to tin tacks, to the fundamentals, and ask us to interrogate ourselves about who God is and how God relates to us. What kind of God we see in these parables and how we should live our lives in recognition of that God. Now we could look to see what these stories tell about ourselves and home in on the ways in which we are lost, but that's not the lens I'm going to use. I'm going to look at this another way, because I think these parables are exciting for what they tell us about God's relationship with us. If we see the shepherd searching for his lost sheep, and the woman looking for her lost coin as God, and ourselves as the lost sheep or the lost coin, then the parables are telling us about God's love for us. We see that this God of ours leaves 99 sheep behind in the wilderness to search for his one lost sheep and does not give up searching until the sheep is found. Then it carries, carries the sheep home shoulder high and celebrates. We see God, maybe wearing an apron, lighting a lamp and taking a broom in her hand to sweep the floor of her house. Listening for the clink of that little lost coin, searching for it, and then throwing a party for the neighbours when the coin is found. The shepherd searching for his lost sheep and the woman searching for her lost coin are determined and steadfast in their searches. They take risks and exert themselves in their searches. The shepherd leaves his 99 sheep in the wilderness vulnerable to theft, wild animals, all manner of risk. The woman lights a lamp and searches carefully for the coin. There's nothing half-hearted or lukewarm about the way God searches. With the queen's death, we're remembering her service to us over her long life. Nothing half-hearted or lukewarm in her commitment to serve her whole life long, however short or long. These parables speak to the same kind of commitment, but on a God scale. They tell us that we have a God who searches for each of us, going all out to find us, and brings us fully into love. And the whole of heaven celebrates when God finds us. We're also being told that we're a big deal for God. We really matter. Our God knows how lost we are, all the many ways in which we are lost. And in spite of this, is actively searching for us, retrieving us and bringing us home. God's not looking for us because we're righteous or perfect. He's looking for us in spite of our imperfection. In fact, Perfection and imperfection aren't relevant. God's going after us just as we are. And once God gets us home, heaven rejoices. And just to be clear, when I talk about being lost, I'm not talking about sin in terms of the ways in which we have not measured up. Not at all. I'm talking about the ways in which we do not allow ourselves to live fully into God's love. The ways we hide, hesitate, and hold back from living into our freedom as children of God. The places we keep from the light, that's what I'm talking about. Our God knows that we are more precious than our deeds or misdeeds, more valuable than our failures or our accomplishments. 
A contemporary mystic, James Finlay, in following the mystics through the narrow, narrow gate, uses a lovely image of the interplay between God and us. He describes God going out through narrow gates over and over in search of us, and we in turn going out through the narrow gates in search of God in an unending spiral of movement. With each passage through the gate, each instance of being found by God, our relationship with God deepens. It's an image full of movement, responsiveness, reciprocity and tenderness. An image that tells of God's immense love for us. In all our threading in and out of the narrow gates, even in those moments when we are literally on our knees, the God of these parables is searching for us, searching for us determinately, tenaciously, putting everything at risk to bring us home to love. We are being invited to hear God's invitation, an invitation to imagine God looking for us, calling us in closer, holding us tenderly, and celebrating our return. As our realization that we are one with God grows, we will see how foolish we are to imagine that we are unloved or alone, or that God is in any way distant from us. We will realize how foolish it is to imagine that we could ever hide even the most minute part of ourselves from God's love. And in that realization, we will be right there in the absolute heart of God's relationship with us. These parables tell us that in our becoming to this point and all our becoming to come, we are enough, more than enough. They call on us to recognize us, to walk out into the depths of God's love and be held in it. There's another very important image within these stories. We see the sheep being brought back to its fold and we can imagine the coin being returned to a jar or bag with the other nine coins. They're brought back to the place they belong, back home. So we can conclude that we too have a home, a place we belong, a place to return to, somewhere safe. That home is God's love. That's where we belong. We belong in God's love. There's a beautiful simplicity to these images, an earthiness that tells us so much about the way God relates to us. It's not complicated. It flows in and through us just as we are. The complications are all of our making. God just brushes them off, goes out, finds us, brings us home. These parables turn our assumptions upside down. Earthly logic does not prevail. Instead, the logic of love applies. They tell us about God's economy, and it's com the complete opposite of the have more, be more consumer culture we live in. There's no neoliberal trickle-down theory operating here, none of Bentham's greatest good for the greatest number. The good, the whole good, is available for all. And God is going out looking for us to make sure we know this. These parables are foundational, element, elemental in the way they express the core of the gospel. The entire gospel message is contained in they illustrate home truths about God's nature and love for us and our place of belonging, our home. We will spend our entire lives being brought home to that abundant love. Amen.